Hello guys, Ping out here. Welcome to another episode of Santa Capritia. This is episode number 12 in my City Skyline series. If you're new to the series, then I am trying to build a very large Southern Californian style city. So a little bit in the vein of LA or San Diego, that kind of theme, although it's pretty much going its own route to be honest and there's lots of different influences not just those two cities but it is still I imagine located in that kind of Southern Californian area so obviously a fictitious city but um, one that I'm trying to build as realistic as possible and it is a big city and that's one of the things that's driving me a little bit crazy at the moment because it is so big and one of the main issues i have is that i detail a lot of stuff in fact i can't not detail in this game which means it's been taking me an absolute age to get this build complete but um that's just the way it goes and i'm trying to cut down on the detail i really am it's uh not something that i'm proud of particularly i don't want to ma you know manically detail every single area of this city but at this stage i find that i am for example doing this sort of work which takes a long time but anyway let's talk about what we are going to be doing today so the plan is to fill an area, basically this gap here between the um, the suburbs on the left there, which is the region of North Kennet, and th that area is a well. That was actually the last area that I built in episode 11. I actually <laughs> pretty much built most of that that you can see there, but also North Kennet and to the south Chester where the rail yard is which is a predominantly industrial area I really want to fill this gap between the two zones the two neighborhoods and that will really help to bring the city together much more because at the moment it feels a little bit disjointed and um, I want to try and make the whole thing a little bit more homogenous is that the right word Homo homogenous yeah I think so just really want to try and pull it all together so that I get more of a kind of big city vibe rather than lots of little bits all over the place and then once I've done that I can start expanding out and adding adding to it so this is an important episode for me and also just from the perspective of well, how I'm playing the game as well because it's been driving me a little bit crazy the last few weeks this game um, probably just because of the sheer amount of work that I gave myself to to try and finish this episode um, it's not it wasn't easy put it that way and that as I say is mainly down to the amount of detail that I'm adding in I am doing a lot of kind of suburbs as well but um, there is a surprising amount of individual kind of blocks and things that I had to build which I couldn't just copy and paste but certainly the suburbs to some extent you can copy and paste those and um, as long as you kind of mix the houses up a little bit then it doesn't look as if you've just literally copied and pasted it um, so the suburbs generally tend to be a little bit quicker but I find that the areas like the kind of industrial areas the warehouses the commercials the, sh the you know, commercial zones shops things like that uh, all that stuff can take a long time and I think the main reason it's taken so long is just the sheer enormity of this area I hadn't realized how big it was until I started building in it it's um it's one of those funny things with this game you think it's going to take me too long to finish this block and it's like two days later you're only halfway through it so um yeah it has taken me a long time and a little bit stressy at times because I really wanted to get this episode out a bit sooner but here's the thing and I think probably going forward this is a good philosophy to have I don't want to just rush episodes out and not enjoy playing the game because at the end of the day the whole point of City Skylines is to enjoy playing it 
and I was finding that I was getting stressed and not enjoying the game and that's not a good place to be in really because you end up not enjoying the whole process the video and everything else so I decided to try and relax a little bit more not give myself targets just see how everything develops um, and therefore this has taken me a bit longer but to be honest with you I'm happier because I haven't rushed it and I've just given myself a little bit less pressure which I think is a better thing to do to be honest so it does mean I guess that there may not be so many regular episodes just because time is is tight at this stage um, so I don't have a huge amount of free time but the free time I do have I do tend to invest that pretty heavily in this game so um, it may be that it'll take me a sort of three maybe four weeks sometimes to get a video out but I just feel that it's better to get stuff out that you actually enjoy and is good content rather than something that's rushed and you know you're just not happy with The other thing I want to say is uh, I want to try and connect a little bit more to the community because I think it's more interesting with when the community gets involved with the project. And Santa Capriccia is one of those projects and I think I need a bit of help. So what I'm going to throw out to the community at the end of this, uh, end of this episode is just a kind of... Um, I want you really to suggest what I should build next is what I'm saying. I want to give you a kind of multiple choice, uh, four different options of what I should build next. And each option is quite interesting in its own way, but I don't have a preference. So I, I felt oh, the best thing to do is to let you guys decide what I should build. So stick around to the end of this episode where I'm going to be giving you effectively the vote as to what I should build in Santa Capriccia next. And I think actually by doing that, it's going to keep my ideas fresh. It's also going to keep uh, keep the interest going. So I might be doing that for the next few episodes just because I think it might be a little bit more fun and a little bit more sort of interactive with the community. So Apart from that, let's crack on with the build. As you've seen, I've been building this big residential development. This is quite a big area, actually. And I imagine because, as I say, this is very much a transitional area, this this whole, you know, this whole neighborhood. I imagine this was uh, an industrial area of some description. Maybe some warehouses and things were built here and uh, they would have been demolished. And obviously the, the land has then just been completely uh, scraped clear of anything which is often the way in industrial areas, they're kind of literally just, the ground is dug up and the whole site is completely 
basically decontaminated because a lot of those industrial areas have been um, got a lot of ground contamination um, especially these sort of projects you see in London that tends to be the way so there's not so much conversion of existing buildings it's, it's literally demolition complete demolition and then rebuild from scratch which is what this development is all about but still I imagine that it was built on uh, what used to be a industrial area um, and this is the kind of neighborhood or development that you see a lot in cities all over the world really and particularly in London that I can think of as an example um, because I see it all the time these kind of developments and a lot of them are fairly kind of bland nondescript sort of um, designs in a way um, and there's there's always a bit, a bit of a debate about whether you can create these kind of community um, neighborhoods from scratch and I'm never really convinced or, or really sure how well they actually work but um, I think given time they probably do work um, but I think generally a lot of these developments have a, a bit of a, a bit of a kind of bland and soulless feel to them and in a way that's what I was going for with this because I'm trying to build something that looks realistic rather than something that looks really nice um, if I was going to build something really nice then I'd make some kind of utopian vision but Santa Caprizia is not that <laughs> it's very much a kind of gritty urban sprawling you know American consumerist um, industrial a neglected place in many respects but it's up and coming and that's kind of what I was trying to get across with with this neighborhood because it's surrounded by a lot of industry this area and in fact there's a big bus station just opposite which I'll be working on in a, in, uh, in a minute I think um, so it is a very much a kind of working class area but then you've got this quite yeah you know, quite a nice kind of modern residential development slap bang in the middle of it and it's all about the kind of up zoning trying to change the uh the the, the vibe of the local area um but as i say how well these developments work is is debatable but um one of the other things in this neck of the woods that i was been focusing on quite a lot recently are these big rainwater channels and they are quite a dominant sort of landmark for this uh, for this area of the city and they come with their own challenges because obviously it's tricky building these roads across them and adding in all the little details and things I'm actually pulling back a lot on the details of these rainwater channels I used to add lots of gullies and drains and things underneath them but I'm trying to avoid doing too much of that because it just takes so long to do um, but I think some of the cinematics you might see some of those kind of details but most of the time now I'm just adding some roads in and putting some little kind of uh, procedurally objected, object created um, walls and things just to give that impression the road crosses the, the channel there this is the uh, the bus depot or the bus station so literally opposite that big residential neighborhood so as you can see this area is still very much a kind of working class um, you know industrial area light industry light industry I guess rather than heavy industry but it's still got that kind of gritty urban vibe about it um, and um, yeah just lots and lots and lots of detail as usual um, I have these asset editor created things that I can move into position there these big sort of um, areas that uh, I've built in the asset editor and they're really really useful for, fill for filling up spaces and then you can put warehouses and things on top of them but um, as you can see this area is a bit of a mishmash really it's a bit of a kind of a a uh, combination of uh, fairly kind of I guess these are fairly working class houses um, adjoining really you know sort of light industry and warehouses and things like that but um, these kind of areas I find quite interesting to build I think City Skylines does 
these kind of um, areas particularly well. We've got a lot of assets that we can use to create areas of kind of waste ground and things like that. And in fact, I'm gonna be showing you a uh, in this next section of the video, how I go about detailing one of these kind of awkward areas, this little triangular plot here that I've got. These kind of areas you get in cities, as I mentioned in my previous episode about non-areas, these kind of like parts of cities you wouldn't notice. But actually in this game, this game can do those areas terrifically well, I think. Um, so I actually think that this is probably one of my favorite areas of this build today, um, which I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> That I like these kind of areas more than all the nice shiny uh, modern residential developments but um, they're just fun to build and I think they're quite cool when you see them on the cinematics as well because it it's, it, it's not glamorous this sort of work but as I say City Skylines I think does it tremendously well and um, you're going to see quite a lot of these kind of areas in uh, in the city um, particularly industrial cities have often got a lot of these kind of spaces that have yet to be redeveloped and possibly one day they will be but certainly at the moment they are just a kind of uh, eyesore let's say in in the middle of your city but a, but a pretty eyesore as well I think if that makes sense <laughs> So I'm building a little taxi rank here just next to that um, that strange uh, waste ground area and it's also in between the bus depot as well so this you can see is very much a working area for kind of um, parts of the city's infrastructure really. The other thing I wanted to add where you've got this modern residential development is a kind of school stroke college area and uh, I wanted to put this this typical American football pitch and running track into the into the center of this part of the neighborhood and it kind of forms a, a focal point really for this whole area and uh, often the school or a college will form that kind of key area where everything else seems to revolve around it um, and it helps to also break up the fact that I've got a lot of streets very similar um, whether they be suburbs or industry and things like that. As soon as you put something like this down, it just breaks up the, uh, the kind of familiarity of those areas and creates something a little bit different. So it's always quite good to just mix it up a bit. Um, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the ideas I got for these kind of areas was just going around on Google Earth, just having a look, particularly 
LA and San Diego, which are probably two of the, the cities I'm getting most of my inspiration from. I'm not going to say I'm plagiarizing them, but I'm certainly using them as a kind of jumping off point. And there's a lot of areas similar to this where you've got these kind of big educational facilities sort of in a big block. And that's the other thing, you've got a big block like this, what do you what do you do? I didn't want to just put a load of roads through. So in some respects, putting something like this down um, kind of breaks up the, uh, again, breaks up that kind of uniformity of roads in a grid and it helps to fill out some of your bigger blocks. There is also a hotel there, sort of adjoining the, the complex. So um, it seems to kind of fit in well with that modern development that I was talking about a few minutes ago as well. And obviously doing a little bit of PO. You'll see there's a bit of PO work, not too much. I've been holding back a little bit recently on PO, trying to get away with out using it if that's possible. Although I do <laughs> quite enjoy I'm um, firing up the old procedural objects here and there. see how this area is starting to fill out and um, as I say it has been a particularly large amount of well I was gonna say a large amount of building but it's taken a long time and it is a large amount of building you'll see at the very end of the video there is a few um, I guess before and after shots which will show you the extent of the build because it is a as I say it is a big area that I've covered and there's no possible way that I can show everything and you're not gonna to wanna to sit and watch everything either. But this is another small example of the type of detail that I'm going for, even a small motel like this, which is only covering a tiny area really. I've still kind of invested quite a lot in the detail, trying to, you know, make it look as good as I can even though a lot of the time you probably wouldn't notice half of the stuff that I'm doing or know half the stuff was there. Um, but still, it's something that I feel is good to do and to get the detail into the, the build. And um, it, it kind of, you know, it's something that I just think is necessary. And whether or not I can actually claw back on that detail and reduce it somewhat, remains to be seen but at this stage I am still going to be adding the detail in and it's still going to be taking me you know that, that this amount of time to get this sort of stuff built for example this is using some um, terracotta tiles I believe but again converting them to procedural objects in order to then colorize them a little bit but also fit them into this awkward kind of tapering um, central reservation area I guess you call it and um, this I guess is some kind of little pedestrian zone because you've got shops and things there and behind all of this I then had another massive area which I wanted to fill out and one of the best things to do if you've got a big area and you can't think what you're going to put in it is to build a shopping mall or a supermarket so that's what I decided to do here so it's always a good way a good cheat is to just put a great big building whether it be a you know distribution warehouse or something like that if you can't think what to fill an area in then then go for something like this because it you can immediately fill the space pretty quickly and uh, particularly if you're starting to run out of ideas it's a good good thing to do um, but also i haven't built too many supermarkets although for this 
for this build I did actually build quite a few this was certainly the biggest one so I thought I would just show a little bit of this um, a little bit of this build as well but there we go um, guys it's been a uh, an absolute um, well what am I gonna say humdinger of an episode just because of the sheer amount of work I've done which is not obvious as you can see on camera it just looks like lots of different areas that I've been working on um, stick around for the final part because you'll see the before and after videos showing you better what I've actually achieved which is quite a considerable amount but for the next episode I really want to get you guys involved um, so I'm going to be throwing out to the community four options I want you to um, vote in YouTube and also on Twitter I'm going to make a poll on that just to give me your um, suggestions or your 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 decision really as to what you think I should build so I have four particular builds in mind and each one is interesting in its own way and they're also very different so I have no idea what you guys are going to pick it's a complete surprise and it hopefully makes it a little bit more interesting for me and a bit more interesting for you because it's always good to connect to the community which I haven't really done with this city so these are the four options uh, the first option is over here and I want to build a bridge across the the bay which will connect the mainland to the downtown which is over here on the island and it's going to need to connect into the highway and also there'll be a railway line using that bridge as well I've got a few ideas for what the bridge will look like but I obviously haven't built anything yet I just know roughly where it's going to be so that's option one option two is over here by the railway or the rail yard and that's a smaller scale build but it's going to be on the banks of the river here I want to build a steel mill so that's option two which I think the steel mill could be quite an interesting build actually I really want to try and go for a detailed kind of build for that part of the um, for that option um, the third option will in fact be just to the north of the steel mill up the up the river there and that will be the kind of second city of Santa Caprizia, which is called Pastilian. And I really want to try and build the downtown area of Pastilian. So that will probably be one of the biggest builds, if that's the option that you guys decide. Um, but, but that's the thing. I need to I need <laughs> I need you guys to decide. So I can't really plan anything at this stage. The fourth option, which is a little bit um, left field really is over here so the other side of the mountains I want to build a lake and a kind of dam it's not going to be a particularly big dam it's more going to be like a kind of a, a smaller scale dam with a lake and a little kind of town around the lake and I think that area will be rather a nice spot so guys that's it the four options the bridge the steel mill the downtown of Pastilian the second city of Santa Caprizia and the lake dam town combo on the other side of the mountains there i'm going to make a poll i want you guys to let me know your preference of what i should build next and until next time i bid you farewell and take care cheers guys